evening all and welcome to episode 41 of Kerbalism. I'm here in Mission Control having a look at some contracts, trying to make us a quick buck or two before our radio telescope gets to where it needs to go. And uh, I've seen this contract here, um, position a satellite in orbit of Kerbin, geosynchronous satellite network. It's not a geosynchronous orbit by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it is something that's fairly easy to do. Something that I think we could build on the station because it's a lot cheaper to launch from the station than this to launch from Kerbin. So I'm going to accept that and uh, let's have a look, see what we need to, well, what the requirements are to get from the station to the orbit we need. So after doing a bit of checking out, I've discovered two things. One, to get from the station to the orbit required would need just over 2,000 meters, just under 2,000 meters second of delta V. That's what this has. This has everything it needs. But this can't be launched from the station. The reason being is that uh, in the contracts here, do, 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 it says build a new unmanned probe that has uh, uh, unmanned probe that has an antenna and can generate power. Now, although this can do that, it won't count as being launched if we build it on the station it must be launched via that green button there either in here or in the space plane hangar so none of the contracts for building new things can be done by building them in orbit that's a little annoying but well i'm glad i did a little bit of reading and found it out first rather than doing it all and uh yeah that wouldn't have been fun so um we need to get this up into orbit so Let's turn the atmospheric back on because obviously we'll be launching it from here. And let's add a tiny little decoupler to the bottom. Do uh, a fairing because it's not very aerodynamic as it is. Nope, it's not going to work. There we are, and then some form of fuel. I'm gonna go with that because it's aerodynamically sound and big twin booster engine, what does that do? Uh, that, press the magic button here to sort my staging out. I love that mod, that's fantastic. Smart stage is brilliant. Um, stage one, 3,273 meters second. It's uh, less than that to get to Kerbin's orbit so um, yeah to get from the surface to low carbon orbit is three no it's about 4,000 meters a second so that's uh, in theory not going to be enough but I'm sure I've got there on 3,000 meters a second before um, let's let's consult my little data planner thing here um do, 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 do. um it says for a realistic approach 4080 meters a second so hmm uh do i want to add a bit more onto it or do i want to risk it with what we got here i know what let's risk it with what we've got here i'm i'm putting my faith in gravity turn I believe in that mod I believe it can do the job and um, yeah let's uh, let's launch this and hope for the so, best one thing of note well two things of note really one I forgot to put Kerbal Engineer on this I must remember to do that uh, but two I've pressed the first guest button this is a completely brand new craft I've never launched anything even remotely close to this before and it has given me some numbers so gravity turn with the first guess does in fact guess it doesn't need to do a single launch to get it right but um we'll see whether that guess is correct or whether we should go tumbling down into the abyss and so like a true professional this is the point in the video where i mute the mic to record the launch and forget to unmute it for the rest of the recording session so from here on out it's going to be me Watching the footage back, trying to remember exactly what happened. 
So, here we are in orbit. I did a little uh, burn afterwards just to get us into orbit because Gravity Turn did a pretty good job getting us up here, as it always does. You can see here we've got a 87 and 77 orbit. That's pretty good. Um, and uh, we've well, we got up here without worrying about the delta v. So that 4,000 meters a second. Um, clearly, we've used a lot less than that. So let's uh, extend the solar panels, get ourselves all set up, and um, sort our maneuver out to get us to where we need to go. So. I've added the maneuver nodes in here. I've got the the one in the orbit we have and the one at the top to match the orbit we need. Um, I did, as you can see there, fire a little bit because I burnt off the rest of the fuel in that uh, first stage. I think that was a mistake. I don't remember doing that on purpose, but yeah. Um, but the one thing I did notice here that I remember specifically was that um, if you were to fire on the dark side of the planet going around to the periaps and then set a maneuver up to circularize there, you will use 400 and something meters a second for your second burn. If you do it the way I've got it set up here, where you're firing up to the highest point, the apple apps, and then you circularize down to the peri apps, you'll use 342 meters a second. You see there. The initial burn from the orbit of the planet up to the peri apps or apple apps of the target was only about 10 meters a second difference. So it made so much more sense to burn up to the highest point we need to and then circularize, then go to the lowest point and circularize from there. I did think that the initial burn would be more than the second burn, but um, turns out in practice, that's not how it works. So this, this is what we're gonna go with and uh, let's start our burn and see how it goes. And with a quick jump to the end, as you can see, here we are with the contract complete. There was a very small maneuver I had to do about halfway around to, to get to where we were here, but it was nothing major. I did use the RCS to boost me up here because I was a little concerned about the fuel. Um, it was sort of touch and go there, so I decided to enable the thrust on the RCS to push it along with it. And I realized that I've used that a fair bit and don't think I've ever actually explained quite how it works. So yeah basically if you right click on an rcs block you'll have this toggle actuation toggle show actuation toggles there um that one has an option there where you can change the your pitch roll everything so it, it, it acts a bit like a wing on a plane but the option towards the bottom is called uh four by throttle that one allows you to use the rcs systems like an engine so when you um pull up the throttle on the on the engine to fire your main engine the RCS will push along with it. It's very, very useful for long maneuvers because you can just set it, the engine going and you could walk away and let the RCS push you along rather than having to hold the H key all the time to, because H is forward when RCS is enabled. So quite a useful thing. I don't think I've explained it before. So I thought I'll explain it now. And uh, well, if it's useful to you, then I hope I've helped. But now it's time to switch over to the Sentinel Telescope. Kerbal Alarm Clock has told me that it's about ready to jump out of Kerbin's sphere of influence and leave to join Kerbal's sphere of influence, Kerbal being the name of the sun, obviously. So um, yeah, we're almost there. Let's have a look, see, we're 30, 30 seconds out. So not long at all now. And there we go, bit of a camera change and we have left Kerbin's sphere of influence. There she is in the distance. Farewell, and we have joined into the sun. Now we need to change our orbit. We need to, um, I think, shrink it down. It needs to be closer to Kerbal than to Kerbin. Cl closer to Kerbal than Kerbin is. So, yes, there it is. There's our, our red ring we've got to aim for. And, um, yeah, uh, this ship does have a lot of Delta V on it. So, this shouldn't be too problem if we just point retrograde and I believe I just fire the engine, although I was trying to figure out exactly how I was going to get down there. But what I was concerned about, if I remember rightly, was that if I just fire the engine retrograde, I'd be caught by Kerbin again because we'd slow down. But then I sort of looked at it and realized that we'd come out the side of Kerbin, not the back of it. So, yes, we um, 
add a little maneuver here Low ourselves down so our peri apps would be about 10, 10 million I think about 10, 10 and a half million 10 for 4 so yes we slow down a bit more and uh, there we are then we will be crossing crossing the pathway we need to go that is in 190 days that's uh, a long way off yet so we've still got half a year before any of this happens anyway um, our Duna probe is still 230-ish days away so yeah there's a lot of um, waiting when it comes to uh, solar mechanics um, to waiting for your craft to get to another astral body it's a uh, it's a long process it's not an easy one so after a bit of fiddling around with it I've decided that it's um well I've discovered it's only cost me about a thousand delta V to to do what I need to do 500 now and 560 odd later so it's probably not even going to use up the stage that I currently have let alone the other fuel tank that I've got attached to this so um a little bit over engineered but well I'd rather have more fuel than not because well with more fuel you can always do more things but without enough fuel you won't get to where you need to go so it's here that I realize that I don't have to worry about waiting for Kerbin curb to get out of the way um, I'm coming out the side of it so um, the side being obviously if you're following it along its orbit so um, I could just fire now and not worry about being recalled so, um, yeah, that's what I do here. I fire the engine. I um, get rid of the maneuver nodes because they wouldn't make much sense. And uh, I then wait for it to get itself down to the orbit uh, or the periaps that we need. Yeah, now, it's quite a slow process trying to burn 2 billion meters off your orbit. Um, I did earlier on say it was 10 million. It's not, it's 10 billion meters away from, from Kerbal so yes but um quite a long burn but uh eventually there we are we're there our periaps is is there in 189 days so um I think we'll set an alarm for this that one for our periaps I believe it is um also give myself a little bit of leeway because I've normally leave it on one meet one minute Sometimes that's not quite enough. When you're traveling at these sort of speeds, you want a bit more time to make sure you're getting your maneuvers right. So um, I think I said it's 30, yes, 30 minutes. And uh, click on everything in the background there. And yeah, curl alarm clock is set. Everything is ready. So, um, right. The next thing on the list is the pod. Our wonderful guys on the way to Mimbus. So, um, Let's go and catch up with them. And here we are with more time warp magic and the ability to turn my microphone back on so you can actually hear what I'm saying live rather than having to do post commentary. We are here about to enter the sphere of influence of Mimus. Um, if I just forward time a bit here, we will cross into Mimus's sphere there. Uh, we are going to still be a long way off. I should have probably done a manoeuvre halfway up to get a bit closer, but well, do you know what? For the minute, this will have to do. Um, we want to go the other. There we are. That will give us a nice capture into the atmosphere. Uh, Two hundred and sixteen meter burn. We don't have much fuel left. Um. Got a bit of more repellent, not a great deal. These side monopropellant tanks, the uh, little round ones, they're not all that good, to be honest with you. I, I should have probably put a different tank on this, but, um, well, as we learned last time, weight matters, so, uh, yeah. Let's, um, let's just point ourselves a retrograde and uh, warp to our maneuver. And hopefully get there without any weird things Th this script called um needs getting a little annoying this uh warnings all the time scantat one is the current one we've lost control on so 
it's basically in the shadow and going round around in circles and having problems. So let's very quickly disable that one. Set one configuration uh, battery supply uh, battery and signal. Don't don't worry about that anymore. That's not a probe we're using at the moment, so um, I'm not interested in it really. Let's um, again warp to move. I do keep getting messages about the batteries on Canisia Station. I've been back there. I've had a look at what's going on. It is just some bug thing that's. Uh, it doesn't seem to charge the solar panels when you're at high time warp. It's just a weird thing. I'm going to try and fix it with throwing up some more batteries or maybe one of these capacitor things that a uh, Kerbal attachment system has or Kerbal inventory system. Nope. Sorry. Um, it was a different mod. One that I updated and I spoke about it in the last episode and I can't remember what it's called now, but it gave me a great big capacitor that can store energy. So I might send that one up there instead just to uh, help it. And I've missed my burn time, but that doesn't matter. Um, hopefully I'm going to have enough to set this down somewhere. I want to go somewhere that we haven't been before. If I can. So um, I would have to bring up my science. That one there. And... Uh, what it says about Minimus. Uh, more specifically, we want a surface sample, don't we? Surface Minimus. There we are. Um, anywhere that isn't the lowlands. So, okay, we've got plenty of choice. And the great thing is, as well, we have actually scanned the surface. So we know what. Um, what bombs are where? But right, there we are. That puts us. Do, do, do apps one. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Oh, periaps. Sorry. Yes, of course, periaps. Right. So let's uh, have a look at some of these biomes. How do I bring that up again? I use that one there. There it is. And I want to go into overlay control. There we are. Overlay control. Interesting spelling. And um, we want biomap. There we are. There are the different biomes. Wow, that is really bright. That is really bright. So anywhere that's white which is a lot of this place. Wow, I'm sorry if that's glaring on the video, but that's uh, quite bright for me. But yeah, any of these places are the lowlands. Um, there are some flats in there as well. We've also got the great flats, which I'm sure we've been to, but didn't get a surface sample. And we've got the highlands. So we'll be flying over here. And uh, Highlands, Midlands, we've got plenty of choice. If I could land somewhere here, I could get two surface samples. So that's going to be the plan. Let's uh, turn that back off and add a little move here. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's fast forward time until we get to here and see. Um, uh, that one there, where we'll be, because I need to know what the rotation of Mimus is going to be at that time. Righty dokey, let's bring up the biomap again. Very bright. And we could land somewhere here, I think. I think that's possible. Let's have a look, see here. If I bring that down, oh. Very difficult to see. Yep, that's going to land us about there. Minimus is rotating to the right, so that looks good to me. Okay, turn. Um, I think if I have biomap turned on and then go back to normal, it's still... No, it's not painted. Nope, okay, that's okay. It's just in the map. So we... I'm going to turn that off anyway, because... 
That's bright and somewhat annoying. And so, uh, by the engineer. And there we are on our approach to the surface. It's bringing in nice and gently here. A uh, meter a second that'll do. And yes, there we are. We're going to be coming down on the dark side of the planet. I'm not really worried about that. Um, we'll keep the batteries nice and charged up and uh, we should have plenty of power. 3,500 3, power, plenty. So let's descend towards the planet or planetoid or moon or whatever you want to call this, the Minmus. Let's, let's descend towards the Minmus. Um, right, I am going to retract our solar panels because I really don't want to knock them off. That would be bad. And um, I also want to extend the landing gear. And then go around some more and see where we can land because I think this here, this is where we want to kind of go. And then we've got slopes and midlands next to it. So we would have to do a little burn to maneuver us off. But Mimus is rotating as well. So I need to make sure that it's going to sort of makes sense I think um, let's uh, walk to here right I also want to bring up my suicide burn where was that unless I'm putting it in the wrong place uh, altitude terrain horizontal speed nope I can't see where it's actually giving me the the uh, not suicide burn the um Lowest, lowest part that we can do. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm waffling about something. I don't even know what it is, to be honest with you. So let's uh, slow ourselves down, and that's where we want to land, over there. So um, let's just land here. Let's let's just slow ourselves right down. and see if we can gently put this down without blowing an engine up. Because my track record is very much of blowing engines up on landing and I don't want to do that anymore. It's not good for the Kerbals, it's not good for the equipment. Not really good for anyone. Um, there's a suicide burn. That would have been because we were still technically in orbit. That's why it didn't show. Yes, so. Uh, try this. This gives you obviously the most efficient way of landing. If I fire the engine full power when that hits zero, I will gently touch down. But I don't want to do that because again, I'll mistime it, get something wrong, go boom. Nobody really wants that. So let's get down to about 100 meters or so and fire the engine again. And uh, yeah, I realise I'm on orbit, not surface. There we go, that's better. Did wonder why I was moving sideways. Nice and gently, nice and gently. And boom, there we are. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What have I done here? I left it on retrograde, and of course, when you bounce, retrograde is then up. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Does this have the power? Yes, the magic power of reaction wheels. I'm really not sure what the R&D guys make the reaction wheels out of, but it's something absolutely fantastic. Um, there, there must be giant spinny wheels in there that, I, I don't know, that, that whole thing must just be a reaction wheel and the Kerbals just sit inside it and spin around or something, I don't know. But, um, but we're here, we are on the surface of Minmus, 
we've got 369 meters left which i think is enough to get us back to kerbin i hadn't really thought about actually slowing down the rendezvous with the station yeah, we could use error braking it doesn't matter we're we're okay so let's get all the science shall we um you observe the goo record the data um crew report and while the material samples were processed you begin to turn your thoughts to how mimus looked like a giant mint dessert you discover that you are now hungry okay so bob out you get and um i don't recommend sampling the soil it's uh well i recommend getting a sample i don't recommend eating it all that and uh down you go off you go down to mimus Bump. there we are EVA report. You're like a superhero when you jump in the low gravity. Yes, yes, you do. Look. Leap small buildings in one bound. Well done. Oh, let's uh, get a surface sample as well. And uh, let's have a look how far you've got to walk to get to the other places. Uh, overlay control, biomap. Um, up the top there to the highlands and a little bit further for the slopes so that's not too much of a problem I don't think but, um, that is roll out uh, up there for the highlands and then just off the edge for the slopes so Right, I'm going to lead the ship there, and Bob, you're going to go for a little walk. A few giant leaps later, 5.6 kilometres of, well, it wasn't a walk, it was a jet pack flight. We're here at the slopes. For some reason, I didn't pass the highlands, I've just come direct to the slopes. So, I think up there might be the highlands, so that's where I'm going next, but... We need to get an EVA report here, feel like a superhero, and another surface sample. Very pretty, but not edible. Yes, very good. Uh, I'm going to travel over there to the slopes next, and then back to the lander. Um, still got plenty of monoplant, that's good. Electric charge is good, so yeah, we're okay for the minute. So, um, right. Over there you go. And a very quick flight over slightly down the hill, oddly enough, we've come to the highlands. Um, I'm not really sure why I skipped it in the first place. Uh, maybe it went round, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're here. Uh, superhero and... You sneak a taste of the surface sample. Ow. Have you got holes in your soup? Nope, definitely not made of delicious dessert products. Well... You're going to have to go into quarantine when we get back because really not good for you. However, getting back is the next thing to do. So, 5.9 kilometers that way, away you go. And as Bob heads back to the ship, that's where we should have to bring this episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope to see you again next time. And as always, have fun.